The Atlas Centaur was a United States expendable launch vehicle derived from the SM-65 Atlas D missile. Launches were conducted from Launch Complex 36 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station CCAFS, in Florida. Atlas Centaur, Convair, the manufacturer of the Atlas, developed the Centaur upper stage specifically for that booster, sharing its pressure-stabilized tank structure. Centaur was the first rocket stage to utilize liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as propellants. Originally, Centaur was conceived of as a purely experimental project to develop an experience for larger, more powerful rocket stages so as not to distract Convair's focus on the all-important SM-65 Atlas missile program. Convair developed a specially enhanced version of the Atlas D vehicle for mating with Centaur stages. The Atlas was equipped with an uprated booster section, the MA-5, which had twin turbopumps on each booster engine, and the structure reinforced for the large upper stage, along with the elongated fuel tanks. Centaur development was made somewhat difficult by the insistence on modifying Atlas components rather than developing totally new ones. This was done for time and budget reasons and because it allowed the Centaur to be manufactured on the existing Atlas assembly line at Convair. Although originally under ARPA supervision, Centaur was transferred to NASA in July 1959, 11 months after the program's inception. The Air Force retained overall supervision in part because they intended to use Centaur to launch a network of military communication satellites known as ADVENT. The constellation of 10 satellites would provide round-the-clock instant communications for the three main branches of the U.S. military. The first three would be launched on an Atlas Agena, then the remainder on Centaur. ADVENT never got off the drawing board, but Centaur quickly found a use for several NASA planetary probe projects, namely Mariner and Surveyor. Under original timetables, Centaur was to make its first flight in January 1961. In April 1961, NASA Lunar and Planetary Programs Director Oran Nix suggested that it might be necessary to use Atlas Agena for Mariner instead. In April 1962, a month before Centaur's first test launch, it came out that the rocket stage's lift capacity was about 400 pounds less than anticipated, which meant that Surveyor could not carry as many experiments as originally intended. The vehicle was launched at 2.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 8 May 1962, with the intention of performing a single burn with a partially fueled Centaur. Slightly under a minute into the launch, the Centaur stage ruptured and disintegrated, taking the Atlas with it in a matter of seconds. Analysis of telemetry data and closer examination of the launch films quickly confirmed the Centaur as the source of trouble. The failure was determined to be caused by an insulation panel that ripped off the Centaur during ascent, resulting in a surge in tank pressure when the LH-2 overheated. At T plus 54 seconds, the Centaur experienced total structural breakup and loss of telemetry, the LOX tank rupturing and producing an explosion as it mixed with the hydrogen cloud. The insulation panels had already been suspected during Centaur development of being a potential problem area, and the possibility of an LH-2 tank rupture was considered as a failure scenario. A congressional investigation in June 1962 called the overall management of the Centaur program, weak, and Werner von Braun recommended that it be cancelled in favor of a Saturn I with an Agena upper stage for planetary missions. The congressional committee was headed by Representative Joseph Karth, who expressed his opinion that Centaur was a useless project. The production Centaur stage had less lift capacity than originally planned, leading to ARPA cancelling Project Advent. NASA transferred Centaur development from MSFC to the Lewis Research Center in Ohio where a team headed by Abe Silverstein worked to correct the insulation panel problems and various other design flaws. In November 1962, President Kennedy suggested canceling Centaur entirely, but was talked out of it on the grounds that the experience gained with liquid hydrogen rocket engines was vital to the success of the Apollo program. Centaur was upgraded to a high-priority project because of this direct relation to Apollo. A conflict between the Air Force, who had primary oversight of the Atlas, and NASA also existed as the Centaur stage required various modifications to the basic Atlas. The dispute was ultimately resolved by NASA agreeing to purchase standard Atlas D vehicles which could be custom modified for Centaur launches. The redesigned Centaur stage functioned without any problems and performed a single burn to geostationary transfer orbit, where it remains in 2021. Following Centaur staging and engine start, the number two engine began to lose roll control. The C1 engine was able to compensate for a time, but the Centaur eventually lost control and began tumbling. Premature engine shutdown due to propellant starvation occurred at T plus 496 seconds, and the Centaur impacted in the South Atlantic. The Atlas phase of the flight and the initial phase of Centaur flight were uneventful. 
the mission went awry when the Centaur could not be restarted due to an ill-conceived design modification. The Ullage rockets were reduced in size to save weight they proved insufficient to settle the propellants in the tanks. The AC-5 flight on 2 March 1965 at 13.25 Greenwich Mean Time from Cape Kennedy in a highly elliptical orbit, with a payload of 951 kilograms, was only intended to carry out a single burn of the Centaur C, and program officials felt confident. On a nominal mission, the Centaur would boost its payload on a direct ascent trajectory to the moon. The flight quickly ended in disaster as the Atlas's booster engines shut down after a few feet of vehicle rise and the rocket fell back onto LC-36A and exploded, the Centaur's LH-2 load going off in a huge fireball for the biggest on-pad explosion yet seen at Cape Canaveral. The failure of AC-5 resulted in another congressional investigation, again headed by Representative Joseph Carth, who argued that US$600 million of taxpayer money had been spent on Centaur so far with little to show for it and that Convair was taking advantage of being the sole supplier of the Atlas Centaur vehicle. The committee proposed that NASA consider alternate choices for the planetary probe program, such as Titan IIIC, or outsource the manufacture of Centaur to other contractors. The Pad LC-36B was hastily brought online, with an entirely successful AC-6 launched on the 11th of August 1965 at 14 hours 31 minutes and 4 seconds Greenwich Mean Time. Although Centaur appeared flight-ready, the surveyor program was delayed. With the retirement of the Agena stage in 1978, all Atlas flown from that point onward were paired with Centaurs except for a few military flights involving decommissioned Atlas EF missiles.